guys, it's going to do I am back with another video today. I'm starting a new series. This is my true crime videos. They're going to be done in less than 10 minutes. I think there are plenty of creators out there that go in deep and they'll give you 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half on true crime cases. And I know that there are people out there that love that. I know there are people out there that also just want all the juicy bits, all of the information there presented to them in a chronological order so they can get the gist of a case and they can get on with the rest of their day. So I'm gonna be that guy, I'm gonna do true crime in less than 10 minutes, okay? We're gonna do the Devil Made Me Do It case which is being made incredibly famous right now because The Conjuring 3 is coming out, it's all about Ed and Lorraine Warren and this is one of their most famous cases and it was made famous, well, for reasons you're about to find out. Okay, here we go. This is The Devil Made Me Do It case in less than 10 minutes. The reason this case is so famous is because it's the first one in US history to use the devil or possession as a form of defense. But let's go back to well before the court case. Let's find out what actually happened. According to Arnie who killed his landlord, Alan Bono and Debbie Glatzel. We have first hand recounts from those two people because the Discovery Channel was doing a paranormal series and they interviewed them specifically for this case. So they claim that things started getting weird when they acquired a rental property and they began cleaning it out. Now young 11 year old David, not Arnie, but 11 year old David was actually the first person to start acting very strange around this property. He claimed that he saw an old man who would push him, harass him and would terrify the 11 year old. And this got worse and worse as time went on. Arnie and Debbie just thought that this was a child acting out, making something up to get out of cleaning and helping to bring this rental property to a livable standard. David informed them that this old man vowed to hurt the family should they continue to stay in the rental home. Apparently David said that this old man would sometimes come in the form of a beast, a demonic entity muttering in Latin, as well as threatening to steal David's soul. Now the family did hear strange noises coming from the attic, but it was only ever David that saw this old man. David would experience horrific night terrors. He'd be very strangely behaved on a regular basis and he would even have scratches and bruises which inexplainably would come up on his skin. So the family got really worried and they called upon the Catholic Church to bless the house. The family in the end decided that the house was evil and decided to no longer rent it. David's visions would just get worse and worse and they even started occurring during the daytime. 12 days after David initially saw the old man, they called in Ed and Lorraine Warren, who at this point had a very big reputation for being demonologists. Lorraine claims that she saw a dark mist around David, which is apparently a sign of a demonic entity attaching itself to someone. David had started to growl, have an almost demonic tone to his voice at times and recite pages of the Bible. This also caused David to have convulsions and seizures which meant that a member of the family had to stay up each night to stay with David. The Warrens deemed David to have multiple possessions, 43 to be exact. David was then subjected to three lesser exorcisms in which Lorraine claims that David levitated, showed examples of precognition, which is basically telling the future. Apparently in one of these exorcisms, he foreshadowed Arnie Johnson killing someone, which of course came to fruition. In October of 1980, the Warrens contacted the police to tell them that this was a very dangerous situation that was going on. Apparently during one of the exorcisms, Arnie Johnson, to try and save David, coerced one of the demons to possess him. Now he claimed a few days after the demon possessed him during this exorcism, he was actually viciously attacked by one of the demons. The demon allegedly took control of his car and plowed it into a tree. He went back to the rental property to try and essentially duke it out with the demon that he believed possessed him and he claims that he had eye to eye contact with the demon in the house that he believed was the location that the demon resided. All of this was going on at Debbie's mother's house so they decided to leave there and they contacted Alan Bono to rent a property from him. 
Debbie was hired by Alan Bono as a dog groomer and moved into an apartment nearby her job. After moving in, Arnie started behaving very, very strangely, very similar to how David was behaving before him. Apparently, he would fall into a trance-like state, he would growl and hallucinate but have no recollection of what just happened. February 16th, 1981 was the day of the murder. Johnson called in sick and joined Debbie as well as her cousin at the kennel where Debbie worked. Bono, the couple's landlord and Debbie's employer, took the group to lunch at a local bar and Bono proceeded to drink very heavily that day. Apparently the scenes became slightly agitated with Bono being intoxicated and people could sense that something was about to go down. Everyone proceeded to leave the room but Bono for some reason grabbed Mary, who was Debbie's young cousin, and refused to let go of her. Arnie proceeded to growl at Bono in a demonic fashion and as his grip on Mary released and she ran towards the car, Arnie Johnson pulled out a five inch pocket knife and stabbed Bono repeatedly. He died several hours later and according to Johnson's lawyer, he suffered four or five tremendous wounds. Mostly on his chest, but one actually stretched from his stomach all the way to his heart. Johnson was discovered wandering around three kilometers away from where the murder took place. And strangely, this was the first ever murder recorded in Brookfield, Connecticut. I think they're on a 193 year streak with no homicides at that point. He proceeded to claim that the devil made him do it in court, but this was thrown out. And he was charged with first degree manslaughter. The judge ruled that such a defense could never be proven and was therefore infeasible in a court of law. Johnson was subsequently convicted, though he only served five years of his 10 to 20 year sentence. Now in the movie, Ed Warren says something that is very interesting, and I believe the lawyer said it in real life, that basically, and I'm paraphrasing here, that the court is willing to take the word of God to know that someone is being honest, and yet they will not entertain the idea of the devil at all. It seems slightly hypocritical to me personally. I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you guys think? The trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, also known as the Devil Made Me Do It case. The Conjuring 3 is coming up very soon. I would love to know your thoughts. This was me getting this case done in under 10 minutes. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. Check out all my stuff. All the links are down below. The podcast, the NFTs, the clothing brand, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Come back next time. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you very soon. Sweet one geese.